Hey everybody, welcome to week 10. Welcome to week 10. This week we're going to talk about uh, custom external controllers and the OSC protocol. OSC stands for Open Sound Control. So um, the kind of the reasoning behind this lecture is that uh, we've been working in Super Collider so far this semester and interacting with the program and making sound by typing and evaluating code. And this is not always the most uh, intuitive way or sensible way to perform a piece of music. Um, and so for that reason, we have a huge family of external controllers. Um, I've got uh, this M-Audio mini keyboard controller. I've got a Korg Nano 2. I've got this... Um, uh, Q Neo over here, and these are all MIDI controllers. All MIDI controllers. MIDI been around for a while, um, and Super Collider very friendly, very friendly with MIDI. Tutorial nine in my main playlist deals with using MIDI. Um, there are also uh, things called HID devices, or um, I guess they're just called HIDs, human input devices. So a lot of game controllers, uh, joysticks and things like that, those are HIDs. I think this Bluetooth keyboard is an HID device. I've also got um, a Manta over here, which I just got recently. This is technically an HID device as well. Um, but today we're going to be talking about um, uh, OSC. Uh, open Sound Control, OSC Communication. Um, OSC is a, a communication protocol developed, um, oh, I always forget the year. I want to say like mid-2000s, but I might be totally wrong. And you can go to opensoundcontrol.org and kind of get uh, the technical specs of the OSC protocol. It's In spirit, it's kind of a lot like MIDI, but it's uh, faster, it's more accurate, it's more uh, flexible, and it um, it can be sent wirelessly and stuff like that. So it's it's um it's a network based protocol. Um so that's that's a uh, OSC. And um in fact, uh OSC is kind of Super Collider's native language. So if we actually boot the server and and then we're going to uh, go OSC func dot trace true. And the OSC func is a is a class that um, uh, allows you to respond to OSC messages. And this trace is a class method that allows us to just basically go into debug mode and just print everything that's um, coming in. So when I run this, you'll see that there's OSC already happening. No controllers, no external stuff. Uh, that's because Super Collider exists as these like these, this client application and the server application. And as long as the server is booted, these two are sort of constantly talking to each other. Um, maybe not constantly, but um, it's false that. So um, so you can see these messages are just kind of coming in. OSC message received. It has a timestamp. This is the um, IP address and port from which the message was received. This is the port to which the message was sent. And here's the message itself. Uh, it's got a, uh, this is the named address of the message, which is slash status dot reply. And then a bunch of information. This is the obviously the sample rate. Uh, I think these these are all um, the same information that we see uh, down here in the green numbers. It's the uh, average and peak uh, server CP, uh, uh, computer CPU usage. And then we have number of unit generators, number of synths, number of groups, and number of synth defs on the server. So it's just sort of sending general status information, right? So OSC is a very natural protocol to use with Super Collider because it's kind of already built with OSC in mind. Okay, so for this lecture, um, we're going to be talking about uh, Touch OSC. And Touch OSC is uh, it's a it's a, a basically an application that lets you build your own custom devices to run on like mobile devices, like phones, and um, phones and iPads and, and stuff like that. So uh, you know, you 
like get touch OC and you can download it at these various places. Last I checked it was five bucks. Seems pretty reasonable to me. Um, and along with touch OSC, there is the touch OSC editor, which is free and you download it here, I guess. And this is basically you build your interfaces on the computer and then push them to your mobile device. And then you have a little custom controller that you've built for yourself. Um, so I've got my iPad connected over here. And we're going to go into touch OSC, which I've already got downloaded. Here. And this is sort of the uh, what you're presented with up front. It's kind of like the sort of settings page. And I'm going to go into where it says layout sample grid demo. This is something I built earlier. Um, I'm just going to pick one of these default things, like this one called simple. So I've selected the simple layout. And I'm just going to hit done up in the upper right corner. And this is one of these built in layouts. So you know, I've got my iPad right here and you can just adjust these and got some buttons, got some sliders. Uh, yeah, and uh, so it's um nothing's coming into Super Collider at the moment. Um, we haven't quite set things up correctly yet, but we'll do that right now. And uh, so I'm gonna hit the little uh, dot in the upper left corner of the touch OSC interface. <clears throat> And so it says uh, OSC, like it's got the connections area right at the top. We're going to go into OSC. And this is where we kind of set things up. So obviously we want OSC communication to be enabled. And then we have host, uh, outgoing and incoming port, and local IP address. So uh, touch OSC when running on a mobile device sees the host device as the one from which it gets its interface information. You know, if you've built some interface, it's it's the computer that you're um, on which your layouts are all saved. So I'm gonna just double check my local IP address here. It is in my system preferences. Yeah, so got uh, 10.192.158.96. And uh, also the, you know, when you're using an external device with a touch OSC and a computer, they've got to be on the same network. And both of my devices are on my university network here, Illinois Net. Um, so they've got to be on the same network. And um, so I've got the host IP set and uh, OSC messages are sent to an IP address on a specific port. And Super Collider by default uh, listens for OSC, the language application, SC Lang listens on port 57120. So that's why I've got 57120 set right here. Um, but it's always good to confirm the the port here because um, this is the default port, but there are situations where you might open Super Collider and something else somewhere is using that port. And so Super Collider will just take the next available port. So it might be 57121 or something like that. So this is just a way to check. This is where the port on which SC Lang is listening for messages. And then there's the incoming port. This port is relevant if you want to actually send OSC from the computer to touch OSC. So we'll just take note for now that it's 9,000. And then this is the local IP of my iPad. So I'm going to need to know that as well. So, you know, we might as well make a new um, instance of a net address, which is basically, a, this is a class that represents network devices. So I'll say touch OSC equals net address dot new. And we got to give it the IP address, which is 10.194.20.179. There's no way I'm going to remember that. 20.179. And this, uh, by as it, this is nonsense to Super Collider. It can't parse this because it thinks it's some wacky, you know, fourth dimensional number or something. It's like it's just syntactically invalid. So it has to be a string. And then the port, which was 9,000. So now we have uh, in Super Collider a representation of the Touch OSC app running on this particular device. And so we're just going to hit done on the keyboard here and we're good. So we're going to back out of this and we'll go back to our simple layout. So we're just, we're already, we have it selected already. So we're just going to hit done in the upper right corner. And now let's go, I'm going to make this kind of small. 
maybe I'll put it up here and kind of move some things around. Let's resize some, some stuff here. Okay, so now we'll go back in uh, debug mode. And I'm going to quit the server just so we don't get these uh, these uh, status reply messages cluttering up the pipes here. Um, so we're listening to all. I'm just going to move a slider here. Whoop, there it goes. Um, so we have received a whole bunch of um, messages. A whole bunch, actually. Um, and so they look they look kind of the same, but they're a little bit different. There's a timestamp. This is where they came from. So this is my iPad's IP address and port. And this is the port uh, they were sent to. And then here's the message. It's a little bit simpler. It has an address. Always starts with a slash here, forward slash. And then the value. So I'll just um, clear this and tap the slider a few times. We got a value of 0 0.35, 0 0.717, 0 0.18. So it goes all the way up to 1 and all the way down to 0. Uh, these sliders are on my iPad. Right? On my iPad here, I'm just mirroring it on my computer using QuickTime. So these, these are this is the Touch OSC. We're the thing up here. We're just looking at my iPad running Touch OSC, and I've configured the OSC settings so that when I move it, it sends OSC messages into Super Collider. Right? So we got that slider there. Um, this slider here. Um, slash one slash fader four. Slash one fader three, slash one fader two. Here one. And then these buttons, these are just toggles. So you can turn them all on. And so it's got a value of one when it's on, value of zero when it's off. And if you look on the left side of the interface here, there's actually multiple pages. So now we have like a little push grid where we can just tap these buttons and a two dimensional slider and a uh, little. Toggle grid here, electric dance floor kind of thing. You know, so it's just and it's all it's all really nice kind of multi-touch stuff. So yeah, you know, it's very very flexible. Get rid of this here. All right, so that's just kind of uh, looking at the raw stream of OSC with uh, OSC func dot trace true. So we'll turn that off again, and um, let's. Uh, all right, where are we going? Let's um, uh, okay. Let's we want to actually use a, an OSC responder to actually get these messages. So we're gonna make a new OSC def. This is very similar to MIDI def, to synth def, to P def, T def, all the def classes. Um, we give it uh, some sort of name as a symbol. It doesn't really matter what it is. It's just to distinguish this OSC def from other OSC defs, and then a function. Yeah, we can pass in the OSC message. I think we can pass in more than that, frankly. Um, let's re let's make this look normal again. Um, the function, a function or similar object, it will be passed the following arguments: message, time, address, and receive port. So we could do all four of those here. I'm not going to bother because I only want the message. So message.postln and then uh, a couple more things. We need the path, right? This is important because, um, you know, different GUIs on Touch OSC send messages with different addresses. So we're, we have to be selective here. Which one do we actually want to listen to? So I'll trace these one more time. And I'm going to go back to you. And let's just work on this, this cyan colored slider here. So the address here is uh, slash one slash fader five. So we drop it in here. It's got to be a symbol. And there's two ways to do a symbol. You can do it like this or like this. This way, that's a symbol, that's a symbol. Um, but uh, we can't use a backslash in this particular case because the syntax is confusing for Super Collider. It, it, uh, it gets confused. So I think that's probably why this alternative syntax exists. So we just put it in single quotes. Next is a source ID which I've never found the need to use this. An optional instance of net address indicating 
the address of the sender. So I, I think I could put touch OS, oops, uh, touch OSC here because that's, and that means it would only listen to that device. But I usually just put nil here because I'm already filtering it by address. And then the port to listen on. So I think the default, where we've, we've seen that the current port is 57.120. So that it'll use that if we just put nil here. But I like to be extra specific and say, it's coming in on this port. I know it's coming in on this port, so listen to that port. Okay, so now um, I'm gonna false the trace, so we're not seeing everything anymore. So now I'm uh, moving my slider, but we don't see anything in Super Collider until we make this OSC def. Right? So now we have a little uh, OSC listener. It's gonna be listening on this address, on, on this port, or for messages with this address tag on this port. Um, and we've already set up, we've made sure that OS, touch OSC is sending to this computer, and we're just going to post the message. Beautiful. Right? So we've kind of, it's, it's cleaner. We're not listening to any of these other sliders over here. Um, just, this, just this one right now. So it looks good. And so then now, that, now the, the last sort of step here is we've got some sound that we want to work with. Um, so then we just have to, instead of just posting the message, we would do something like, you know, X dot set freak, you know, whatever. We amplitude. This is where we put the, the code we want to happen. Yeah. The code that does the thing that we want to happen goes here. All right, so let's make our own custom interface. So I'm going to get out of this, and what I'd like is to put my own custom interface in this list here. So we don't do that in touch OSC, right? We do it uh, in touch OSC editor. So this is a, an application that you download and install on your computer. So it's gonna open it up here, taking its sweet time. All right, about time. This is Touch OSC Editor. Um, first thing you're gonna do is pick your layout. So um, I guess you can you can customize it if you want a certain size, but I'm just gonna go with iPad. And I'm gonna make it horizontal. You could change the uh, view size if you want it like not so big. And basically at this point, you just start right clicking on the canvas and you make a bunch of stuff. So let's make a push button. We can resize it, you know, any size we any size we want. We, if I hold Shift, it's going to stay a square. We can change the color. Uh, I don't know. I think I forgot to mention this, but uh, tutorial eleven talk about Touch OSC. I'm going to try to do a little bit more in this video. Uh, you can make a fader. Uh, if I want a vertical fader, and I'm in horizontal orientation, I actually have to pick horizontal. So it's a little bit weird. Um, it's just it's still thinking about the canvas in the same way. It's just rotated 90 degrees. So this is technically a horizontal fader because this is the top and this is the bottom. Whatever. Um, let's make a, a knob or a rotary, an encoder, which is basically an infinite knob. This looks like a right mess here, um, but that's okay. And then I also want to do a multi-push. Um, anyway, you can just play around with these. Uh, just Whatever, whatever suits your fancy here. Let's make them a little bit, color them so they're sort of sort of pretty. Doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so take note of the address over here that's automatically generated. So slash one slash push one, uh, slash one slash fader one, rotary encoder multi push. You can uncheck this auto box and do whatever you want here. But uh, I'm just going to go with the default, the, the sort of auto-generated OSC addresses here. Um, all right, so let's say we're done. And uh, you, you can actually make multiple pages by right-clicking on, on the top here. And then you can make a multi-page interface, but I'm not going to mess with that. And OK, so we're going to save this. You'll want to make sure it goes into this Layouts folder. When you install Touch OSC, 
it um, it installs the like the application in your uh, applications folder or whatever, and it also has a folder called layouts. And so I'm going to call this um, week ten touch OSC demo. Save. All right, and now the fancy part. So we're going to click this sync button right here. And the touch OSC editor goes into a state where it's kind of broadcasting and uh, awaiting a device to get paired with it. So we're going to go back to our iPad here. And the way we do this is we go into uh, the layout. So where it says layout simple right in the middle, we touch simple. And we're going to go to the top where it says add. Touch add. And okay, here's where it may populate found hosts with your computer, uh, but it doesn't always show up. I, this may this might be a consequence of the particular uh, network I'm on. I don't know, but you can always go into edit at the top right, and then the plus at the top left. Nineteen. Eight. I always have to like double check this because I just I have this. I seem to always enter these incorrectly, but that matches. Okay, so then uh, I've entered this host manually, so I'm just going to tap the IP address, and it should be done. So and there it is at the bottom, week 10, touch OSC demo. So add a couple things here. So hit, we'll select week 10, touch OSC demo, and then hit done in the upper right. And look at that. We got our electric dance floor, we got our infinite knob here, our encoder knob here, fader, push button. Looking good. So now we can say, um, I guess we'll, we'll trace this again. So let's see, clear this. There's our push. There's our fader. Encoder. This one's kind of weird, right? It's an infinite knob, so uh, it's basically a value of one when you move it clockwise, and a value of zero when you move it counterclockwise. And and this can all be um, changed. Um, like you can go into your devices and say, you know, what's what's the range? So instead of zero to one, you could make it like one hundred and two hundred or something. You know, so you, you can customize the behaviors. This can be, you know, centered inverted, all this sort of stuff. And then you just have to save and resync to get those changes to be reflected. <clears throat> okay. So, um, let me gather my thoughts here. So, where was I? Okay, so let's 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 uh we get we we're tracing these here. All right, so we got our multi push encoder, etc. So it's all working. So I'm gonna just let's do some some sound here real quick. One second. I'm gonna make a synth diff here. Boot that server. And don't need to trace these anymore. All right, so this is very basic. ADSR envelope, triangle wave. Is that not working? Am I, am I using the right device here? Move back. Okay. Uh, oh, <laughs> I see the issue. The gate is zero by default. Okay. Okay, so pretty normal stuff. Make that a little quieter. 
I guess. Okay. All right, so we're going to make um, uh, an OSC def that uh, listens to, let's say, that uh, push button there. And uh, okay, so we're, I'm just going to call it listener again. It's just going to overwrite the old one. And so the button is uh, slash one slash push one. And we're just going to, we're going to start by um, just making a, a synth, right? Just make one of these with the gate off. So there, ooh, I got a bunch of them. Let's command period on that. Okay, so now we got one and we can just set its gate to one and zero whenever we want. And the done action is zero. All right, the done action is zero, so the synth does not free itself when the envelope finishes. And so we're just gonna say x.set um, gate one. Uh, nope, 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 not quite, uh, message at one, because if you remember, if we just post the message, it's got a, uh, it's, it's the message is actually an array. It's the address and the value, and sometimes multiple values. But in this case, just the address is at index zero, and the uh, uh, value is at index one. So we want to say, uh, set the gate to the the value, whatever the value of the message is. So now, right, so now we have our very, very basic uh, thing going on here. We just push a button, sound happens. And when I was messing around with this earlier, I was getting a lot of dropped messages. Um, uh, and I think that's just because I'm on a high traffic network. But usually in practice, when I am performing with an OSC based setup, I will bring a little router with like a password. And it's not like set up to use the internet or anything, but it's just like a little router that I know I'm the only one uh, piping traffic onto it. And that, in that case, touch OSC, it's all very responsive. But um, I can't do that here because if I do, then I can't stream because I have to be on the internet here. Um, Okay, um, let's let's talk about this. Uh, let's uh, we got this grid over here, right? This um, this uh, multi-push device, and uh, let's quit the server for a second and trace some of these, and we can see that they're coming in. Uh, each one, each button has its own address. You, know, this, you can kind of imagine different ways this might uh, be implemented here. You could imagine that like every one of these buttons has the same address uh, and it sends an array of 25 values every time, or each one has its own address and it, each one sends one value. And so this is the way they, they went with it. And this is um, makes it a little difficult to work with in SuperCollider because we have to make an OSC def for each one that we want to listen to. But SuperCollider is a programming language, so it's actually not too hard. Now you 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 wouldn't, in any, in any circumstance, want to actually be copying and pasting OSC def twenty five times and changing the OSC address um, each time. So we can use iteration to do this. So here's the way I like to do it. Um, we're going to it's twenty five buttons, so we're going to iterate over the array one, two, three, four, five, and pass in each item and call it row. And then for each row, we're going to iterate again uh, over each column. So um, we're going to have, uh, so here we're gonna, row is gonna be one. And then uh, 
column is going to be one, two, three, four, five, and then row is going to be two, and column is going to be one, two, three, four, five. So for each row, there's five rows altogether, we iterate over each column. There's five columns. So it's nested iteration we're doing here. And for every one of these 25 uh, row column combinations, we're going to make uh, an OSC def. And they need unique names. They can't all have the same name because then it's going to make 25 and each one is going to overwrite the one before it. So I'm going to call this multi. And here's, here's what I like to do here. Uh, make that a string, uh, concatenate with the row, concatenate with the column, and turn this whole thing into a symbol. <coughs> Right, so this is the going to be the name of each OSC def. So it's going to be multi one one, multi one two, multi one three, multi one four, multi one five, multi two one, multi two two, multi two three, etc. Um, for now, we'll just post the message. Uh, okay, and here's here's again where we have to get tricky. It's basically the same thing here. So we know that this is the address for one of them. And so this part is fine. This slash is fine here. But these numbers, so this is going to have to be row. And this is going to have to be call. And I, yeah, I don't think we need to say as string here. I think it'll, like if I just say um, hello, plus plus three, plus plus, goodbye. That is the string, hello three, goodbye. All right, so it, it knows what to do here. So we're generating a unique address for each one of these 25 OSC defs, uh, nil source ID and port. And I think that ought to do it. Let's try it. So now, I press these buttons. Uh, I think we might still be tracing. I don't want that. Yeah, looks good. So there's that one. There's that one. That one. Right. So we've got a unique OSC def for each one. And uh, we didn't have to type them all out manually. All right, so now I'm um, going to paste in some code here so I don't mess something up. But uh, let's do a, a, a musical example. Let's make like a little uh, arpeggiator kind of thing, right? So I just want a unique pitch on each one of these here. <coughs> so I am taking the array uh, 0 through 48 by 12s, collecting over it. Adding to each number uh, 35, this is an arbitrary starting MIDI note number, and then uh, a minor pentatonic scale, so five, five pitches here. Uh, and so if I just run this without flatten at the end, I get this. So a minor pentatonic scale, one octave starting on 35, starting on 47, starting on 59, etc. And then we're just going to flatten this scale so it's a one-dimensional array. So those are our MIDI note values. And then I'm going to do um, this here. So I'm uh, just making a bunch of these tone synths. And each one, I'm, I'm basically uh, collecting over the scale, and for each one making a synth, and its frequency argument is that note number converted to cycles per second. So if I just do this, oh, I need to boot the server, don't I? Got to wake that server back up. And we'll run our synth diff again just to be extra certain here. All right, so there we go. We've made 25 synths. And so they're all stored in this synths array. So I can say synths at 16. That's set gate 0, or gate 1, I guess. And let's pick another one. Right, so we just have these 25, um, 25 synths here. And uh, the last thing to do 
I'm going to command period for a second. I'll add this here. Uh, actually, take this code and bring it in here. Uh, so we just got to change this, right? Um, this should just be uh, synths uh, at, well, some index, right? We want this to be 0 through 24. Um, and uh, uh, we just want to, we'll come back to that. So set the um, set the gate of a specific synth to be 1 uh, if the button is pressed and 0 if the button is released. Because the messages are already um, just zeros and ones. So basically we need to do a little bit of math with row and column. I'm going to call something uh, index. And so what we want here is when row and column is 1, 1, we want this to be 0. 1, 2, we want this to be uh, 1, right, etc. When it's 2, 1, we want this to be um, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This should be 5. When it's 2, 2, it should be 6. And when it goes all the way up to 5, 5, it should be 24. So this is just one of those things where um, if, you, if you can figure out what you want, you just have to kind of figure out a, a mathematical uh, equation that takes these two numbers and spits out the desired value. And um, this is going to be uh, row minus 1 times 5. So when this is zero, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, each of those values times 5. So 0, 5, 10, 20, 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. And then we're going to add to this uh, column minus 1. So when it's 1, 1, we have 0 times 5, which is 0, plus 0, right? And then plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4. Uh, and then this goes up to uh, 2 minus 1, which is 1 times 5 is 5. So we'll get uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, um, etc. This is something I do a lot. I just like will just randomly treat Super Collider like a, a sketchbook, and I'll just like make notes to myself here and then delete them when I'm done. All right. So it's at index. And this should be all we need to do. Let's see if it works. All right, it's a little bit laggy. I think that's just because of the network I'm on. But, you know, it's working. Yeah, and so it dropped one of the off messages. So it might be good to do something like this. And you might even want to make a, an extra button uh, somewhere over here, which sends an OSC message on a unique address. And we have a special OSC def responding to it that will just send a gate zero message to the default group. And just so if there's any stuck notes, they'll all get turned off. Um, anyway, so that's, uh, I, I think the, the thing I wanted to highlight here is just, um, if you find yourself in touch OC and you're like, oh my God, I've got a hundred, I've got a hundred of these little buttons and I have to make an OSC def for each one. Think like a programmer, right? And you think, okay, this is a repetitive task. I, I just have to express this algorithmically. And when it's a, a two dimensional grid, you can do nested iteration, you iterate over the rows and for each row, iterate over the columns and you've got access to the row and the column, and then you can do whatever math you need to establish the desired functionality. Okay. Uh, I think what I wanted to do for the, um, for the 10, 10 minutes we had left is show a, a sort of more finished product, you know, like when you're watching like a cooking show, and they're like, and this one is already done, and they take it out of the oven, and, and you're like, wow, it's like magic. So save this. And uh, now we're going to do, uh, I think I just called it touch OSC sample grid. This is just a larger project. And um, 
I'm also going to open up my other interface I was working with here. Oh, that's touch OC editor. What I want is QuickTime. All right, so I think I called it a uh, sample grid demo. Hit done. Looks like this. Oh, it's <laughs> it's sending this. It's the it's got the same OSC address as the other multi push. So uh, I guess we'll might as well talk about how to get rid of your OSC defs, right? You can just say OSC def um, dot free all. That's a quick way to just get rid of them all. So now. Nah, no more sound. All right, so I just have four faders. And um, I actually made an all notes off button here because I was having these stuck note problem because it was just dropping some of the OSC messages. All right, so let's walk through this. I got us some, I got some uh, global uh, global uh, variables here. Rate, amp, this is a reverb send in decibels, and then the frequency of an impulse generator. I make a bus stuff we've seen many times before, boot the server, and then I deal with my buffers. So I've got um, two folders, one called glitch, one in my calibration tone folder, and so just a bunch of glitchy little sound files, uh, which I think I have them somewhere. I mean, where did they go? Uh, yeah, yeah, so like, this might be a little loud. I'm going to turn this down a tiny bit, but they sound like um, just little crunchies, you know. And I just made these a while back just from, uh, just by taking long audio files into Audacity and just like obliterating them with various speed and pitch and tempo changing effects um, to various extremes. And you just and you just whittle them down until they're like really, really, really short. And then I just put them in a folder. So they're just little glitchy sounds. Uh, so I make an empty collection. This is technically an event, but it's basically a type of uh, dictionary or uh, technically an identity dictionary. And it lets you do stuff like this, where you can say b.glitch, which is initially nil. And uh, we collect over that folder of sound files and read each one um, into a buffer. I'm, I'm reading just the left channel, because these are stereo, but I just want mono. Um, and then same thing with the other folder. So we have, um, let's actually kind of do this in slow motion. So we'll quit the server, um, run these, get a bus. Uh, boot the server, and just gonna run this section of it, and that's new. Yield was called. Oh, I can't do s dot sync. Okay, because that has to be inside of wait for boot. So we'll just run this code. And so now I can say uh, b dot glitch dot choose dot play. And it's just going to be one ear, I think, so it might be a little, a little loud. I don't know. Ah! Yeah, it's a little unpleasant, but, um, you know, we, we make them sound nice. So then we have the synth def. It's like two synth defs. One of them is uh, essentially play buff. The other one is reverb. Uh, and just walk you through it here. I have a, a sustaining envelope. Uh, done action zero, and so they, it's, it's similar to the previous one we just did. We got this play buff here. Um, usual stuff, I'm using an impulse generator, which is just cranking out some number of impulses per second, and it's being used to reset the play buff to its start position, which by default is zero. So basically it's a, it's a, it's a way to automate the, um, the sort of pointer jumping back to the beginning, so I can kind of loop through these little glitch files um, slowly or, or quickly or whatever, right? Uh, apply the envelope, I uh, pan it, and we send it out to hardware, and we also send uh, an auxiliary path to the reverb, which by default is super quiet, so pretty much no reverb. Then we have the reverb synth. Um, Gverb needs a monophonic input, so I'm actually summing the left and right channel together and then scaling by three decibels down. Um, arbitrarily large room size, four second decay, you know, so let's um, 
just run these. You can run all this code in one go. I'm just kind of walking you through it here. Okay, so now I'm just picking 64 random buff nums. I'm using a pattern for this. So I just combine these two collections of buffers. Uh, use P Chef to pick a random order, turn it into a stream and say, give me the next 64 buffers and collect over that collection and give me the buff num of each buff num. So it's just going to give us a, a random set of uh, integers corresponding to buff nums for some 64 of these samples. There's more than 64. There's probably like 100 or 150 or something. But I just want 64 because I'm working with a 8 by 8 grid. So one sample per button. All right. And then, uh, uh, yeah, then we then we make a group. And I, I put the reverb synth after that group. And then I make 64 synths. They all go into that group. And initializing all of the variables. Um, so, so some of these are controllable with the GUI here. So like the red one is playback rate. This, the green one is a reverb send. The brown one is, uh, oh, the, um, the frequency of the impulse generator. So how quickly to loop through the file. And this pink one here is, um, or magenta or whatever, is uh, global amplitude. And then each one of these buttons is a gate on a corresponding synth. So by default, the gate is zero, right? They're, they're all just waiting to, they're making sound, but the amplitude hasn't started yet. And then here's the same technique we saw earlier. Um, so we're just doing a nested iteration. And yes, yeah, pretty much exactly the same thing as we saw. And we also saw we don't need these as string messages. It's not actually necessary. I thought it was, but now I learned it is not. And oh yeah, and then I have some other OSC defs for the individual faders. So fader one controls playback rate. So it's just gonna set everything in that group to have a new playback rate. Uh, this one controls the reverb send, the speed of the impulse generator and the amplitude. And that's it. In fact, I'm gonna hit command period and just run all this code at once. So it should dump a bunch of synths onto the server, 64 in that group, 1,000. And then there's the reverb right after it. And now we should just be able to kind of play around. All right, so I'll just uh, make, some, make some noise here. Yeah, so we got a stuck note. It's just, that's why that button exists. Anyway, so it's just kind of a glitchy little jam machine that I thought was fun to play around with. Um, I don't know. It's a, I, I'd say go ahead and you know download Touch OSC on your mobile device and uh, spend the five bucks and just make a make an interface and then get it to pipe that OSC over to SuperCollider. And um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, and it and it it lets you sort of completely control what the interface looks like. You get to provide exactly how many buttons and faders and knobs and things you want, rather than kind of adapting your piece to work with like some existing physical controller. Um, you can make multiple pages, really really customize it. Um, oh, you know what I didn't show is how to uh, talk to Touch OSC. Like, let's say we want to um, just just. Uh, in this case, there's we don't usually want to send data from Super Collider to the faders because it's not really a two-way street here. We're just kind of thinking as the controller 
as being the the source of the control data and then the computer receives it but um if we wanted to uh send send a message we just have to take note of the ip address and port that uh touch osc is associated with so uh, and then we can go and say like um so we'll, I think I already have it, right? It's touch OSC, and that's a net address, and that is the appropriate IP address. So all we have to do now is just get this open and uh, hit done, and we're just we'll just look at this uh, this pink fader on the right here, and uh, I'm just gonna. So what we do is we say the the name of the net address object dot send message with a capital M, and then we just gotta say. Uh, Actually, I forget what, um, uh, yeah, whatever. I'm just trying to remember the, no, we can just use OSC, uh, OSC func dot trace. I just, I just forget the OSC address. So it is slash one slash fader four. So we just send a message to touch OC. We say slash one slash fader four, and then the value, comma, and so like 0.5. There we go, right? Jumps up to 0.5, set it to zero. It seems to have dropped that message. <laughs> set it to one. Uh, random value between zero and one, random float. And you can see touch OC, there's a little, um, the little red LED that lights up in the upper right corner when a message is received. And when you send data, is a little green LED. That the green is for uh, OSC data being transmitted from touch OSC, and red means OSC is being received. Um, yeah, so you can also, you know, program like a little light show <laughs> in Super Collider and and get it to light up automatically. So data can go both ways. Um, all right, so that's uh, that's it for this week. Um, you might maybe you'll sort of find this uh, find touch OSC kind of a useful thing as you work on your final super collider semester projects you know whatever you come up with it's um it's kind of a nice little protocol useful for doing little control things all right so uh, homework three that was due today i believe and um i'm going to put up a prompt with just one more assignment it's the uh, the final project and that'll just be due at the very end of the semester so it's just very open-ended just kind of work on whatever you want and uh, look forward to that next week we're going to talk about live coding in Super Collider. So that's something I've been getting into a little bit more recently. Um, I mean, in a sense, a lot of working in Super Collider is very real time and live because it's a sort of high level interpreted language, but um, there's, uh, there's a family of objects, uh, family of classes known as the Just in Time Library or JIT or JITLib. Um, so a lot, a lot of fun. It's a sort of a different way of working with Super Collider, and we'll kind of start scratching the surface with that next week. Um, so that's it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, hope you found this useful, and uh, we'll see you all next week for some uh, live coding in Super Collider. See ya.